uh, so you have to look at it that way. We look at it simple. If a product idea comes in, uh, I can't plan for a product idea to come in that's slam dunk. Uh, if a product idea comes in, we're ready to go execute right now. And the way we do it is on the planning side of execution, you know, a bunch of stuff they say, well, this is going to take six months. And I don't allow that because what people do is wait five months, there's five and a half months, and then start. I want to know, people ask me, when, when do you want this? And my usual answer is three o'clock. Uh, and every day, my view is the next day, what can you do today? Do your maximum right now, today. Uh, and so, unfortunately, some planning can actually go backwards because they say, well, you know, everybody else takes a year. How is that relevant? You know, to me, it's like, no, no, three days, four days, let's go. So there's a lot of areas which planning is, is, is actually counterproductive. Most of the people that watch this are relatively rich people, right? Yeah. I mean, and most of them are going to earn a living. They'll eat, they'll live, you know, they'll be fine. Beyond that, there should be something to do that's useful. That's something that says, okay, I did something. I didn't just work on a door latch all my life or something. You know, not, not to say door latches are bad. I mean, I'm sure guys work on door latches and it's awesome. But at the end of the, your life, you want to say, did I do something of value? Or in the beginning or in the middle? You know, if every day you go to work and it's like office space, <laughs> you know, where do I, I, you do, yeah, do I care? Does anybody care? If that's what it's going to be, then get paid less. Do something useful. You're going to be way better off. And, and chasing money, I never chase money. You know, people ask me, well, why, when did you decide to give it away? I, I never, the problem is I never in, was interested in having a, a toys. Right? But it's one of those, if you try, don't try, it happens. Right. It's the cool factor, you said. Right. right. It's sort of, when I was young, anyway, if you were trying to be cool, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. It's, so it's, it's sort of, if you do th that which is, has value, you're much better off. Somebody asked me, I think we were just having an interview, uh, and somebody asked me, well, should we have risk takers? You know, entrepreneurs, risk takers. And I said, no, 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 no. Entrepreneurs are not risk takers. You know, if, 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 I, if I, somebody in my company wants to take risks, I say, oh, no, no, go work somewhere else. You know, our job as entrepreneurs is to minimize risk, to manage risk, to give it to somebody else, not take it. If you want to take risks, go to Vegas. <laughs> you know, it, it's a really simple concept. But if you tell people you should be risk takers, they go out there and just blow your money. I mean, that's, it's really dumb. Yeah. And again, like I said, you know, our other prin uh, principle is, please don't do dumb. Why do you drop out of Princeton? Uh, well, I was, first of all, I, I don't hate Princeton. That was a mis, uh, that misrepresentation. Was, uh, it was okay. a misrepresentation by somebody who went to the University of Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay, so beyond the college rivalry or the school rivalry, right. why do you drop out? Well, I, as I, I mean, the Princetonian just interviewed me a few days ago, and I wanted to clear the air because I never said they were bad. Yeah. Know? And the purpose really, to me, was, look, I got, it was great for a year. And they said, why a year? I said, look, it's the same reason why nobody stays for five years. Why five, why four years? I mean, it's an arbitrary number. Yeah. Uh, I got what I needed out of Princeton in one year, and after that, I didn't think it was useful. Um, partially because... Look, you go to school and the primary reason is you want to make some money. You want to get a good job and you make some money. It wasn't important to me. I mean, I thought, I mean, my friends were some of the richest people in the world and they were a little bit, they weren't really together. They were sort of messed up, yeah. a lot of them. And I thought, what is this? I'm trying to be like them? That makes no sense. So then I thought, okay, I don't need this. And let me find something that's more useful. I think there's a, there's a misconception that 
if you're a billionaire, that must be, you must go out and your butler brings you tea in the tea garden or something. I get up, you know, I, I, I get ready, pour a bowl of cereal. You know? What's your favorite cereal? <laughs> I'm not going to start okay. with that. But, you know, I, I put the milk in, I, I eat the cereal, drive to work, and then I work like hell. I, I, I work hard if I can. You know, if there's work to be done, I'm doing it. And at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's really not that different. I mean, there's somebody who said, there's only one thing you can do eight hours a day, and that's work. Mm. And what if, what if you enjoy your work? I mean, to me, it's football, basketball, cricket, all in one. Yeah. Wow. Work is great fun. <laughs> and I'm, I kind of, we've made our business so that it is fun. You know, everybody there enjoys it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have certain conditions in the company that if you don't enjoy it, go work somewhere else. Most businesses are the same. Whether you're selling um, energy products or whether any consumer products, if it's useful to people, uh, the rest is just business. So if you find something or invent something that's really useful, uh, at that point, it's really common. Whatever you're selling, the process is not that different. our process is maybe a little bit different because we really don't have MBA type processing. We basically common sense. You know, we we look at businesses really in a simple way. You you make good stuff and you sell it. You know, instead of you know all the highfalutin words which I really don't understand, like brand uh, awareness and brand equity and you know all the fancy terminologies people use that they don't have a product. So uh, we what we did was is simply simply stick to fundamentals, which is you make a really good product, and 80% of marketing is making a really good product. And then you go out there, and if people like it, uh, they agree with you, then they buy. Actually, you'll find most of the products that they say are good are marginal. Most of the folks that come up with products usually use some kind of a gimmick. In other words, gee, let's make it pink if it's for women, or let's make, uh, you know, what's his name, famous person endorse it, or, or products themselves are marginal. And then they say, well, no, it's a good product. Well, my question is, do you use it? If you're going to go out there and sell it, do you use it yourself? Does your family use it? And if they don't, why are you selling it? You know, so really you'll find most of the fellas that say we have great products we didn't get success is they really don't use the product. They think everybody else should. But not us. We're superior to our own product. So there's there's a there's a compromise amongst people about the quality of what they sell. And quality is also misunderstood. In other words, quality starts with if the customer doesn't need it, if it doesn't provide something uh, you know that they're going to pay for. Uh, our, we have different technical terms. I mean, my, our technical terms are slam dunk. You know, everybody understands what that is. You got a slam dunk product or do you have a good product? For us, we get pitched several products a week. You know, and if it's a good product, we don't go out there and sell it. It's got to be slam dunk. It's got to be where nobody will refuse it. And then you have a hard time. With it. So the flaw is really they don't have good products. Definition of a good product is it will do well. Now, there's some amount of execution, but I would say that if you don't have a great product, uh, any amount of execution is going to only buy you a little time. After that, everybody will figure out that this is not that good and not buy it anymore. The problem with everyone is they follow fashion, right? You do what's everybody, all your peers think it's cool, and thinks, you know, this is, right now it's cool to start a business in Silicon Valley and get rich. That's the, when I was, when I was in, in the early, late 60s, early 70s, it was the entirely the opposite. It was get out, drop out, do something else, <laughs> right? So people tend to, both are, have, both are really irrelevant, you know, in the sense that, uh, fashion isn't what, and it should define your life. 
right? What everybody does, what everybody says, shouldn't define life. The ideal thing is to do something that has value, right? People say, follow your dreams. I think at one game, one time I gave a speech, I said, follow your dreams, but make sure it's the right dream. <laughs> you know, if, you're, if your dream is to be a serial killer, please, please don't do that, yeah, <laughs> right? Please. So it's, it's sort of think with your head. Although I know movies say, no, think with your heart. Uh, no, think with your head. Do that which is, you know, has strength, which has meaning. And if you do that which has meaning, your life is better.